guys if you want to see how i created this lovely curly wig stay tuned So you're going to need um, either a dome cap or just a regular wave cap or a stocking cap. Um, some of you were saying that it was um, really hard to fit the dome cap over your head um, once you put the hair onto it. So you might want to either try making a U-part wig and then adding another dome cap underneath that so it fits your head or just creating on the old wig like take an old wig and cut all the hair off and create it on that or you can either you even use a, a stocking cap um why i don't like using stocking caps is because they're flimsy and they don't last very long but um right here i'm just showing you guys how i'm sewing it i'm sewing through the weft if you have a extremely sharp needle i like to sew through the weft um i know a lot of people sew through the hair I don't really like sewing through the hair because it's not secure. Um, so if you have a sharp needle, the best thing to do is to sew through the weft. I'm showing right here, um, for those of us who've been having issues as far as the dome cap not fitting on your head, um, you don't wanna sew on the seams or on any of the elastic bands because that may make it difficult for it to fit on your head. And also, you wanna make sure you're making the stitches maybe you know one inch or more apart because too much stitching is making it tight and hard to move and not easy to maneuver and not stretchy so those are things to think about if you're going to be using a dome cap as you can see right here i'm using a regular old sewing pin to hold the track in place it just makes it go by you know quicker as far as just sewing straight across not having to worry about keep lifting the track and sewing and all of that um so you sally's sells wig pins but why use a wig pin when a thumbtack or a sewing pin works just as well so anytime i'm ending a thread i always double knot it and then cut off the excess thread. Okay, anytime I start a new thread, I like to overlap where the last thread ended just for extra security. So just in case, you know, thread unravels like the whole track doesn't like fall out and you're like oh my god my track um so that's what I like to do So after I'm done a given track, I always remove the pin, of course, and then I sew about two or three times just for extra security because I'm, I am going to overlap the track rather than cutting off the track. Um, just so it's nice and tight and flat. And um, I even loop it under to create a knot as well. So at this point, instead of cutting off the track and starting to lay a new track, I'm going to fold it over and just go in the opposite direction. And right here, you want to make sure you're making it as flat as possible. You don't want any lumps in your head and you know, you just want it to be flat and you want it to lay, lay for the gods. That's what you want it to do. So you're going to sew it probably two, three, four times maybe just to get it that flat look. You want it to be flat. So you're gonna sew through the track. Even if you were sewing through the hair, um, you're gonna, at this point, you're always going to sew 
through the trap just to make it as tight as possible, as flat as possible. You want it to lay, honey, lay. Okay, also you want to make sure you're laying the tracks as close together as possible. I was sent three bundles of this hair and I used every single last bit of it. Um, you want to make sure it's nice and full and fluffy. Um, if you're doing a U-part wig, you probably can get away with only two packs or two bundles of hair. But um, when you're making a wig because you have that extra section, you want to make sure you're using as much hair as possible. You don't want it to look too big and too wiggy. Um, but at the same time, you want it to be full and fluffy and, you know, luxurious. You don't want thin tracks, honey, because that just defeats the purpose. And I don't know what to tell you. It looks a mess. <laughs> no shade. I'm going to show you guys how to do the closure you're going to need some weave glue of course and about three inches of track you don't need that much and um, you're going to begin applying the glue to the track leave a small piece in the beginning without any glue As you can see, I left a tiny part in the beginning without any glue. You're going to turn it around and you're going to fold that piece without any glue. You're going to fold that up so it's sticking up at the top. And then you're just going to wrap around the remaining hair around each other, making sure each part is sticking. Yeah, it's a bit messy, but yeah, weave glue smells horrendous. I always wonder why it smells so bad. <laughs> and then it makes you wonder, like you're putting this in your hair and it freaking stinks. Like, what damage is it doing besides ripping out your hair? But that's another story. Um, so you just want to make sure it's you know, sticking together and dries fast. So we're going to take our flat iron and we're just going to place it right over there. Not for too long though. So it gets, so we can 
dry. Then you're gonna take your piece and you're gonna find the center. You're gonna make sure you evenly distribute the hair all around. Then you find the center, which is right there. Let's see. You're going to take your flat iron and you're going to place it right in the center. And you're going to flatten that piece. You want it to be flat, flat, flat. I hate when I see chicks with closures and they have the little pointy top. It's <laughs> like a cone head. Like that is so unattractive. No shade if you walk around with pointy top closures. But we don't like that. And that's not the business, honey. It's not. So you want to make sure it's nice and flat like this. It's flat, flat, flat. And that's how your closure will look. And that piece right there is where you'll apply the glue or where you can sew it down onto the wig. But I'm just going to apply glue. I may sew it down later. So at this point, um, in the back, as you saw, I was sewing the tracks or laying the tracks horizontally. Now, once I got to towards the crown of my head, I began sewing it in a circle because I want the tracks to lay in my face because I want to bang um, and also because later on I'm probably going to convert this wig into a U-part wig so I want to make it as easy as possible when I have to go back and cut the wig and do all that stuff. So um, as you can see this little part at the top with the clips I actually placed the closure there just to mark it so I know where I wanted it but I'm actually probably going to not probably I actually ripped it off later because it was in the way and just was you know messing me up so you're just going to sew the tracks in a circle like I said once you get to the crown of the head and pay no mind to the clip part of hair in the front because that's where I put the closure that I'm going to rip off later So this is what the wig will look like once you're done laying the tracks in a circle and that center part is where you're going to place that closure right there. So right here I'm just basically showing you my braid pattern. I made um, the two permanent braids in the front and then I have a braid in the back because I'm actually going to sew this wig down onto my head because I don't have time to be taking it off at night and it's just easier to take care of I think when it's on your head so you're acting like it's coming out of your head so um, I place a satin bonnet on my head prior to putting the wig on just as a barrier between the wig and my hair um, and right now I'm just having some difficulty placing it on my head it's kind of tight but I'm going to make it work So it's on and next I'm going to sew down the perimeter onto my head and that's what I'm doing right here. Once I'm all done sewing the front and the back down, this is when I begin combing out the curls because they were way too perfect. and. A fan of perfect curls I like frizz I like bigness I like all of that so um right here I'm just sectioning off where I want the bang to be and I'm going to cut that part I'm not a professional I just know how I like my hair um, I rarely ever go to the salon and get my hair done just because it's just so much easier and so more just fabulous to do your own hair and it's less expensive and it's, it's easier it's, it's so hard to translate your vision to a stylist um, but when you have that vision in your head it's easy to translate it on yourself so that's why I urge everybody to learn how to do your own hair save you money 
I'm not trying to put no petitions out of business, but I'm just saying it's, it's hard out here. So right here, I'm just basically cutting my bang in whatever manner. <laughs> I really don't have any type of method. I just, you know, just cut um, and go with the flow. I'm just framing my face right now. Let me just tell you guys, I absolutely love this hair. And I'm not just saying it because it was sent to me. It's just so soft and the curls are just bouncy and it looks like it's growing out of my scalp. I absolutely love it, love it, love it. So definitely check out Desire Hair. Um, their Facebook link will be below. So that's pretty much the end of this tutorial. I hope you guys found this helpful. It took me forever to do it, but you know, the finished product I'm happy with. So yeah, thank you guys for watching. Thanks for your continuous support. I love you guys. You guys are so dope. Until next time, peace and dopeness.